Hi and welcome back. I'm painting in Art Rage 6 today, doing a painting inspired by Nikolai Feshin. He is a Russian-born artist that relocated to the American Southwest, specifically Taos, New Mexico. And that artist and his textural approach to painting was the inspiration for this work that I'm doing in Art Rage 6. This stay home and safe painting series continues with my love of texture. I love texture a lot I think because um, it matches the way I see the world um, and uh, the lack of clean edges and, and, and clean definitions of things. Also you know just a biological byproduct of having poor vision uh, not knowing that I needed glasses for most of my schooling age um, left me sort of seeing a softer edge to the world than, than the rest of my classmates. That combined with the personality that I have and um, also with um, the love of ambiguity and, and kind of the way I'm enamored with mystery um, and mess, you know, and mess as well. You can ask my wife about that, but all of those things um, were kind of the, the groundwork and the, the foundation for when I was exposed to Nikolai Feshin as a young man. Um, as a, what was that? I was probably 14, 15 years old when my mentor talked to me about his story of coming to um, know Nikolai Feshin. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about that story now. He was a Disney publicity artist that worked on movies like Mary Poppins. He was the guy that, if Reader's Digest asked for a portrait of Walt Disney, he was the artist who would have um, worked directly with Walt to do that. So a really cool. Um, man, uh, a cool, uh, how should I say, a wonderful and inspiring person whose entire life uh, was an inspiration to me. And he had so many cool stories about his time at Disney and also in the American Southwest. Um, it was a painting of the Corn Dancers by Nikolai Feshin, which you should definitely look up, which was his inspiration to um, drop out of the publicity artwork or the commercial arts and entertainment arts and become a fine artist. He moved to Taos, New Mexico and um, almost at, at just the pure curiosity and inspiration of seeing this this unfamiliar world that Nikolai Feshin was painting. He was painting the people of the, of the Taos Pueblo and um, painting in a way that was mesmerizing. Uh, if you've ever seen a Nikolai Feshin painting up close, the texture of the painting has a life of its own. Um, if you were to see it from an angle where light's reflecting off of the oil paint surface, um, it's almost unintelligible to the eye. There's uh, in person such a vibrant textural quality. Um, the only comparison I can make is to Van Gogh. But in Van Gogh's case, you have um, the, the mark making is typically in line with like the contour of the subject matter um, where like long pool tables are made with long linear marks or or the um, dome of the sky is painted with the staccato rhythm of, of undulating marks that follows the contours of clouds and stars and and, and uh, corona of light around these celestial bodies or whatever right but but fashion by contrast it's almost a, a chaos of of interlocking marks that that has more of a it's more reminiscent of the scattering of of water in in whitewater rapids it's an unbelievable uh, thing to look at and it's disorienting and it was it was really uh, attractive to me and to to my thinking as a young person and um um, my work doesn't have as much of that um, chaos in texture and mark that that Fessions does, at least not typically. But I think some of my better work does, um, although I, I don't try to emulate his approach, his approach always sits in the back of my mind as a, as a piece of my, um, my visual dialect, so to speak. So. This painting in Art Rage, sorry for the long-winded explanation there, but that's the backstory. Um, this, pa this piece, this painting, um, I used a host of tools and, and different presets that you can see as you scan back and forth through the video and just copy everything if you like kind of the outcome here. Um, I'm using everything from the palette knife to the custom brush to the, 
the um, sticker brush to um, artist brush presets and the oil brush and the combination of all of those um, which could be anything resembling spray paint or um, traditional oil paint or paint roller it's just that combination of all of those things being mixed together gave me some semblance of that Nikolai Fashion approach that I love so much and I thought that it was a, a pretty impressive um, I guess a, a sort of a statement of of quality uh, that that this little relatively affordable I mean very affordable right now I noticed it was on sale for like $39 um, that you can buy an ArtRage, ArtRage 6 a desktop app for that price that can paint uh, this much texture and this much body and have this much like presence and I think digital painting as a whole is is um, a blossoming and, and vibrant um, medium and it's a it's a cool thing right now because you know historically we've had people digital painting forever in the entertainment industry or um, in the commercial industry but um, it, it's kind of had like a I mean, there's there's like illustrators and cartoonists and and people that have been using it in all manners uh, or all, all forms of art for a long time, but it's getting to the point where it, it's attractive enough, affordable enough, um, ubiquitous enough that people are that are not digital artists that maybe aren't even artists at all who just maybe love to doodle and sketch that are saying, gosh, I'd like to try that, and the that kind of prevalence of, of iPads there's like, oh there's an iPad sitting on my couch every afternoon why don't I instead of just reading on it or or or, um, or browsing the internet or whatever watching Netflix I can paint on that right um, we all have a laptop lying around that's powerful enough to run this software we all have you know something like that 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 it doesn't take much right and even if you have a pretty old laptop you can just paint in a lower resolution and if if the point is just to grow and to learn and to think and to reflect on things, then that's enough, right? If you want to try and um, sell these digital paintings at, uh, as prints in print shops or, or you know, doing gallery stuff with them, of course you may need to upgrade your hardware. But for most people, you could get a hold of something that will run the software and, and do great with it, especially with an iPad. You know, it's all the standard hardware. So um, that's kind of why I started getting into digital painting, getting into to teaching it this way. And that's why I introduced it to my students because um, I think that um, kind of egalitarian mindset that I have around education was um, aligned with the fact that, hey, for the cost of, um, you know, like a, a new computer game or the cost of a decent dinner out with a, with a friend, you could buy the software and and have it for the rest of your life. And it was, for me, when back when I bought ArtRage, I think it was $59 or $69 or something like that. And it was the best 50 or $60 that I ever spent. And in that, I can't think of something else that I got more growth, entertainment, joy from for that price. Just unbelievable, right? Um, so I'm, I'm playing with this software in new ways all the time. And I've been painting in ArtRage off and on for um, seven years, eight years, nine years, um, and, and the software has grown and matured, and I've grown and matured as an artist. I used to, you know, I, back when I started, I wished I would have been watching YouTube videos like this because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just thinking, well, you know, I'm a traditional artist. I'm trained by a former uh, top Disney artist and I've been oil painting and showing my work in galleries all across the four corners I have my work in Southwest Art Magazine as an upcoming artist in America and all this stuff so I can figure this out right I, I got this well had I had the humility to just open up a YouTube uh, a channel and just start learning from the wonderfully talented gifted artists that were already miles ahead of me my digital art would have grown so much more quickly but um, but I didn't. I didn't know how I you know I didn't know what I didn't know, and I didn't know how much there was to learn. And even you know um, after a lot of that, I would consider it not wasted time, but it was an inefficient use of time because I think a lot of the things that we um, need to know, uh, it's fine to learn them from someone else, you know. And I think um, 
nothing can replace our time with the brush. Like my, my, my mentor used to just call it brush mileage and nothing can you know be a, a replacement or a proxy for that. We have to get that brush mileage. But um, when you're painting uh, in a new medium, there's nothing wrong with getting all the help you can. Little tips, tricks, um, hints, cheats, you know, whatever, because there's just so much to learn. I mean, there is so much to learn. You and me, if we if we just got stuck on a desert island or deserted island um, today, right? And all we had was paint supplies and food, we could paint till the rest of uh, our days expire and we would never get to the end of this journey. And that's why we wanna learn as much as we can from each other all the time. And yes, uh, learning things about painting and oils definitely helps in digital and, and vice versa. But but there's no no end in sight for me or for anyone that I've ever known, and um, we're all in search of the that that unattainable thing, that painting that we we fantasize about that never really has a form. It's like being called forth by by the world beyond, and and our artwork is a way of approaching that, and that's what's so unbelievably fun about it. So I hope you've enjoyed today's painting. A little bit of backstory about um, artists who are inspiring to me and also um, enjoyed some of the tools and, and tricks and um, kind of the, the looking at how I'd approach the painting and what tools I favor. So best wishes. I hope you are staying home, staying safe, and painting a bunch in this quarantine. Um, if you enjoy this channel and you uh, and like, and kind of like the stuff I'm doing, check out Patreon. You can always subscribe to this channel or uh, find my daily posts on Instagram. Thank you guys again and best wishes.